Hi guys, Adam the OT back again with my usual simple, fun and effective OT games that are perfect for the home, the clinic or the classroom. Don't forget, if you like these videos and want to stay updated, just click subscribe. Any videos you'd like to see, let me know in the comments and I would love to do a video just for you. So today's a bit different. We don't have one OT game and activity. We have about 50 because I want to show you something I'm making for my um, families, my teletherapy guys, and basically for any families who are looking for a way to have lots of developmentally rich play opportunities. If you're a therapist, this can make your teletherapy sessions a lot easier and more straightforward and manageable. And if you're a parent, it'll give you lots of very simple um, developmentally rich play options and also a way to manage these materials and make it easy. So, okay, so this is one of my OT activity boxes. So there's 10 little items in here. They're kind of like an OT greatest hits collection. So I'll go through the contents. The contents are written in the back. So I have 10 here and I have an I'm making another 40 of them. If you live in Dubai and you would like one of these little boxes, let me know. I'm making these to give away for free because I have had so many families get in touch with me who they don't really know what to do. They like the videos but they find it hard to just make time and organize materials and manage play options for their kids. So this is a way to make that as easy as possible for lots of families, okay? So let's have a look at what's inside the little Adam the OT, OT activity box. So let's have a little peek inside one of these boxes, okay? So it's just a little kind of lunch box, great thing. I have the contents written in the back, that's quite important because I want to make sure the parents find an easy way to keep track of everything, that everything goes back inside. I think all parents know the child buys Play-Doh or buys anything perishable. If it's not put away nicely, it'll dry out and you'll lose that option, okay? So there's a list of contents in the back. I will put that list in the description of the video too, okay? There's a name on the top. So all of these things have never been used. They're brand new and they're all sanitized. So it's only for one child per box. If I have a look inside, let's go through the things and tell you what I'm going to do with them, with the child, okay? So this is a very simple little lacing card. I've, this is a printable I made. At the back, it's got a little emotional regulation checker. This is how's your engine. I do this with all my kids before they work. I'll check where they're at physically, like um, in terms of their own emotional regulation. Does their engine, this is based on a lovely program called the Alert program. How does my engine run? Check it out online, it's magnificent. I've used it for many, many years. Is their engine too slow? Like the little blue fellow here? Too fast? Or just right and ready for action, okay? I'm gonna give away this little printable too, so the next video I'm gonna do, um, probably at the beginning of next week, we'll have a link to this free printable, so I made this one, and you guys can have it too, okay? And a shoelace for the little lacing part. Easy peasy. Each little box will have uh, three little tubs inside. One is for fine motor manipulatives. Now that could be nuts and bolts, it could be pot beads, it could be mini Lego blocks. For this one, it's these little, um, they're kind of like little plastic snowflakes that fit together. There's a whole bunch of activities I can do with that. And around it, there's these little rubber bands. But it's just one box for manipulatives, some fine motor thing, okay? And the rubber bands for my ninja hand game, the rubber band rescue game. So if you have one of these boxes, you will be doing all 45 of my other videos, but then many, many other things besides, okay? Clothes pegs. Clothes pegs are great. They're very good for simple, like, clothes peg, lifting, picking up activities. That's brilliant for developing pencil grip. You notice the fingers you use. I like these type of sprung ones because they're good for clothes peg activities, but if you flip them around, you can also use them as a tweezer, which is hard to do with the smaller brown ones, okay? So it works as tweezers as well. All right, so I have five clothes pegs. Very simple, nothing very fancy or high uh, technology about this. I'll always have some um, kid safe scissors. Some very small or broken crayons. So I buy these on mass, very easy to break up. Why do OTs love broken crayons and freak people out when we do that all the time? It's because small crayons, very small writing tools, are very good at developing proper like writing control because it's very hard to have big fisted pencil grips. So it encourages the kind of proper habits that we like to see in a very simple way is having small writing tools, it tends to kind of promote this nicer tripod pencil grip or quad functional pencil grips and makes it hard to do the wrong thing. So broken crayons, a little tub of Play-Doh. Okay, this is actually two different color Play-Dohs. And the very super fast way to make any Play-Doh more fun is 
googly eyes. So this is my little monster maker box. We make all sorts of different monsters. So it's just two types of Play-Doh. It's wrapped in cling film pro tip because I will keep it nice and squishy and soft and um, malleable. I will always have a tennis ball muncher because it's near Halloween. This is a vampire. This is Vlad the vampire. I drink your blood. Um, okay. I All my tennis ball munchers are different little characters. So again, Halloween, I've got my little zombie who will happily eat brains or pom-poms. And this is a girly girl, actually. I know who this box is for. And she wanted a girl one, so she's got the Duchess there. All right, so every box will have a tennis ball muncher. Of course, you gotta have the tennis ball munchers, okay? It's got a balloon for beat the balloon games. Balloon, that's one of my videos previously. But balloons are really good because you can um, gray them easily. Blow the balloon up real far. Lots of air will keep it in the air longer and make it move slower. So it's good for developing motor planning for kids who are working in that. If you don't have as much air in it, it'll fall down faster. So you need a better motor plan. You need to be able to move and react more quickly. Okay, balloons, always fun. It's got a little sneaky Ikea pencil. This is like, there's a program called Handwriting Without Tears and they sell pencils for little hands, which are great, but Ikea pencils are not too bad, far off. So anyone who goes to Ikea will always bring me back Ikea pencils because they're a really good size. Um, this kid in particular, who this box is for, this is not in all the boxes, but I have them in some. They're struggling with motor pressure and motor modulation, so pressure in the writing tool. Pro tip for that is this boy has a mechanical pencil. So when he's writing, I go click, 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 Click it three times, then if he pushes too hard, it breaks the lead instantly. So he gets immediate feedback and is able to correct very quickly. It actually is, that'll remediate that issue pretty fast. Love mechanical pencils and he really likes using them too. I've got a pipette or a little eyedropper. So that one is for a game I did in another video called the Bubble Fish, but I even this movement, using pipettes and using droppers because it's quite a careful, quite a refined motor action. It's very good for motor modulation. It's also quite fun too. You can use different colors in like an ice cube tray. You can make bubbles come out of the fish for the bubble fish, check out that video. But these are very inexpensive, really easy. I have a straw. Lots of games you can do with the straw. Oral motor control blowing games. Again, only one straw per child. They don't mix them up. And you can even, if you have numerous ones, you can use it for scissor skills, snip them up and lace them on the, the shoelace as well. And then last but not least, a dyna band. So this is a rubber band. I use this for lots of really strong, rubber bands are great resistance bands because they're a dynamic resistance. So the harder the child pulls them, the more they resist back. So it'll be as difficult as the child chooses to make it. So they're brilliant if you have one of my hard charging sensory seekers who needs a lot of proprioception, then they can really have at it. I'll do another video, I think, with lots of resistance band activities. You can find tons online anyway. You can also do my, there was one called the Tile Avenger. I did with a tile. The resistance band is perfect for those Avenger little exercises as well, okay? So that's my 10 things I have inside the box normally. I also have a recommendation in the back. Again, I'll put it in the comments, I don't know if you can see. But it has recommended additional household objects because I don't want to put a banana in everyone's box. But it will say coin, 10 coins, blank paper, tin cans for the crazy cans game. I have lots and lots of coin videos. That's probably one of the most popular ones. Spoons and forks for save the spoons. Um, baking tray for, again, you can do crazy cans with it, rolling them back and forth. Tin foil, there's a bunch of tin foil games. Uh, a banana for go bananas and make your binoctopus and bananimals and shaving foam, lovely sensory play, and small stickers. And you could throw in nuts and bolts or little Lego blocks or many, many other little things you could add to the box, but it makes it logistically really, really helpful. It's a brilliant way, if you're a therapist and you have teletherapy clients, having one of these beside them when you start make, means you know what you have to work with. It keeps everything in one place and you have a, a matching box on your side and it makes the logistics of teletherapy much easier. If you're a parent, it's a great way to provide your child with lots of developmentally rich play options to manage these materials and keep them in like a one-stop greatest hits collection. And also it's like one of the biggest challenges for lots of my parents is with a reduction in the amount of play options, whether it's like financial issues, they're not accessing therapies or they're not going out to outdoor play areas or um, soft play areas, then 
there's a huge increase in the amount of screen time, for example. And iPads are not the worst thing in the world, but the problem is they tend to push everything else off the table. So something like this means you can find an easy way to get a high frequency of play throughout the day and throughout the week. You keep it in one place, you do a little bit of play with the child. It's not super complicated, like none of that is very high tech, but it doesn't need to be. It's not rocket surgery, it's just play, but it's the most ordinary, beautiful thing imaginable for your child's development and for their uh, overall learning and engagement, okay? So that's the OT little activity box. And like I said before, if you live in Dubai and you would like one of these, let me know in the comments and I will try and get one to you. So I have 10 here I've made so far. I have a bunch more materials. I'm gonna, keep, I'm gonna try and make another 40. So I'm gonna try and give away as many as I can. And if you need any, have any additional questions, you want links to worksheets or printables or anything like that, let me know in the comments as well. And I will also get those to you. So that's it, guys. I hope you liked the little OT activity box. If you have any questions or, oh, don't forget, if you like these videos and wanna stay updated um, and want to hear or get the free little, how does my engine run? emotional regulation speedometer. Um, I'll do that in the next video. So subscribe to stay updated. And if you have any other questions, just let me know in the comments. And I would love to do a video just for you or answer any questions you might have, okay? Thank you so much, guys. And for me today, Adam the OT.